Hello. As you know, the whole world is using AC power supply. Have you ever wondered why AC? Why not DC? Well, that's a very good question. In fact, in the early days, when electricity was first invented, there was a fierce battle between two electric companies. One of them is headed by Nikola Tesla, whose company is championing the high voltage AC power system. The other company is headed by Thomas Edison. Yep, the guy who invented the light bulbs. And his company is betting on a low voltage DC power system. Well, you already know who won the battle. Low voltage DC was totally defeated by high voltage AC. But why? To answer this question, let me remind you of this formula. Power is equal to voltage times current. So the same amount of power can be provided using different combinations of voltage and current. What I mean is this, provide a certain amount of power, you can use a high voltage and low current, or you can use low voltage but high current. For example, if your aim is to deliver 2 megawatts of power to the load here, you can choose the voltage and the current at which this occurs. If you use a relatively high voltage of 500 kV, then you need a relatively low current of 4 amps. On the other hand, if you use a relatively low voltage of 20 kV, you need a relatively high current of 100 amps. Then you ask, whether 4 amps or 100 amps, the same power is dissipated here, right? So what's the big fuss? Ah, now let me provide you with more details. So this photograph shows a power station. That's where electricity is generated. But the electricity is not consumed here. It's consumed at factory floors, shopping centers, households, cities, and the distance between the power stations and the consumers could be very, very large. That's where the transmission cables come in. The power stations and the consumers have to be connected by these very long power cables. Now, we are already using copper, which is a very good conductor, and we are already using very thick cables. But because the distance is so long, it could be hundreds, if not thousands of kilometers. So we are looking at the total resistance, which is not small. So let's say to connect the power station to the consumers, we are using a power cable with a resistance of 100 ohms. Now, let's say we are using high voltage transmission. So we are using a relatively high voltage of 500 kV. Then, to deliver 2 megawatts here requires a current of 4 amps. Do you realize that this 4 amps has to run through these 100 ohms? So there's power loss as heat in this cable here. Let's calculate the amount using I square R. Oh, turns out the power loss is 1.6 kilowatt, which is okay compared to 2 megawatt. Let's also calculate the potential drop across the cable. Using V is equals to IR, turns out to be 400 volt, which is again okay compared to 500 kV. So if you use high voltage transmission, then it turns out the 500 kV here does end up roughly 500 kV here. There's a drop of just 400 volt. And also we basically delivered 2 megawatt with just a tiny fraction of 1.6 kW lost as heat in a power cable. Now see what happens if you use low voltage transmission instead. So if we use a relatively low voltage of 20 kV, then we require a relative high current of 100 amps. Now we have 100 amps running through these 100 ohms. The power loss is, ta-da, 1 megawatt, which is unacceptable compared to 2 megawatt. And what about the potential drop across the cable? So using V is equal to IR, it turns out to be 10 kV, which is of course ridiculous compared to 20 kV. So if you choose to use a low voltage transmission, you will start off with 20 kV at the power station, but end up with only 10 kV at the consumer's end. And worse still, while you deliver 2 MW, only 1 MW is delivered to the consumers because 1 MW is lost as heat in the power cable. So you get the picture? Basically, it's all because of the resistance of the power cable. To minimize the I square R losses in the power cable, we want a small I. So for the same power, if you deliver it using high V and low I, then the I square R losses is going to be small. But if for the same power, you try to deliver it using low voltage and high current, then you end up with an unacceptably large I square R loss. Now, some students are going to ask, why do we use I square R? Isn't power also equal to V square over R? If power loss in the cable is V square over R, then isn't a small V better than a large V? Ah, that's because you are using V square over R wrongly. For example, when we were using 500 kV, the power loss in the cable is not 500,000 square divided by 100. 
because the 500 kV is the potential difference between here and here. It's not the potential difference between here and here. In fact, we have calculated uh, the potential difference across the power cable is actually 400 volt. So if you want to do V square over R, you should be doing 400 volt square divided by 100 ohms, which will give you 1.6 kilowatts too. Similarly, for the case when we are using 20 kV, if you want to calculate the power loss in the cable using V square over R, you shouldn't be doing 20,000 square divided by 100. You should be doing 10,000 square divided by 100, which will give you the same answer if you were to use I square R. 1 megawatt. So are you convinced now that high voltage transmission is good and low voltage transmission is bad? But now some students will say, but the problem is with low voltage, right? The problem is not with DC. Why couldn't Edison use high voltage DC? Wow, very smart, are you? Ah, to answer this question, we have to talk about this thing called the transformer. See you in the next video. Ta-ta!